What's going on guys? Welcome back to the garage. Today I'm starting a project that I've been putting off for quite a long time and that's on the Xterra and that is tackling whatever is leaking under the engine. I'm fingers crossed it's not a rear main but uh, the oil pan is just as big of a pain in the ass to fix uh, because it requires removing the whole front diff. So this is probably going to be a two-parter, maybe a three-part video. Uh, this first, <laughs> bloody cats. Uh, this first part of the video is basically just going to be removing the front diff and what's involved in that process. Uh, part two will be the pan itself, and then maybe the third part will be uh, how you wrestle that big uh, front diff back into place because it is quite awkward. So, anyways, uh, without uh, boring you too much, let's uh, get out to the SUV and uh, start working on it. All right guys, so first things first, we'll get the Xterra off the ground. Now you can probably do this on ramps and uh, not have to take the tires off, but I'm in the middle of doing some other jobs. So yeah, that's just my setup for right now. And now we'll take a look at what we actually have to remove to get the oil pan out. So looking at the front cross member and the front diff, you've kind of got two ways to do this. So the, I guess the preferred method is to just remove the bolt in this bushing here and remove the bolt in this bushing here. Uh, that's what the factory service manual says to do. The other option uh, is to remove the cross member bolts here and here. Now, people can do it that way, but if you look under here, the cross member is actually welded to the other piece, um, I guess where the sway bar bracket mounts to and more of the subframe there. So that's not ideal, uh, especially if you're you know, if they've welded this from the factory, you probably don't want to be cutting that, but you can do it that way if you want to. It is quite a bit easier to lift the diff back into place. Um, but like I said, I don't think that is recommended. So we've got, uh, to recap, just these two bolts right here to remove, and those are the front mounting points for the front diff. And we'll have to take off this breather here uh, which is uh, self-explanatory there, just a pair of pliers. And moving to the sides here, we will have to disconnect the CV axles from these hubs here. And that is just uh, three pairs of 12 millimeter bolts. Um, I've had these off, so they uh, aren't gonna be super stuck on there. Uh, but uh, I know some people have found that they have been loctited in there, um, making it extremely difficult to get them out. And just to uh, note another thing that I always like to do when especially working on the Xterra, and if you live somewhere where there's salt, um, just start soaking these bolts like at least a week in advance, just so you're not uh, fighting them and potentially snapping bolts off. So two bolts in the front, uh, six bolts on this axle here, six bolts on that axle there, and now we'll shuffle to the back here and have a look at what we need to remove back here. So on the passenger side, we'll have a bolt here, bolting the cross member uh, to the frame. And once again on the driver side. And then we'll have to remove the four bolts holding the drive shaft to the front diff uh, flange here. And again, I have seen and heard horror stories of people having to torch these out because uh, somebody has red Loctited them in, which is a big no-no. Uh, but fortunately for me, I just did a uh, quick test on here and uh, was able to loosen these up pretty good. Also I have been soaking these bolts for, you know, I think three weeks at least, 
uh, just so I don't run into any headaches, but uh, that's pretty basic. So essentially you've got four bolts holding the front diff in to the chassis and then uh, four bolts on the drive shaft and 12 bolts for the CV axles. So if you think about it, it's not that much work to do. It definitely is going to be a pain in the ass, but uh, we should be able to make our way through it. I guess another thing to note here as well, so I am in the middle of changing out my center link. Um, so if you're fortunate enough to have to replace your center link, and I say fortunate enough because it usually sits right about here. If you remove the center link, it will make it much easier to push this pan straight up and I'll have to uh, wiggle it around and risk uh, messing up your uh, sealant. So that's kind of one sort of tip here is if you need to remove your uh, front center link or replace it and you have to do a pan, um, it's probably the best time to do both uh, just because it does make it a little bit easier to get this pan back in. So anyways, uh, let's get started on uh, removing some of these bolts. All right, so where we wanna start is back here at the drive shaft flange. And first things first, we'll just put a mark on here just so we can put it back in the same position. Now we can take a 9 16ths wrench and loosen these off. So as you notice here, two of the bolts are up top and uh, we can't access them. So we'll have to go inside the truck, put the transfer case in neutral, spin this to where we need it, and then put it back and to four wheel drive so it doesn't move. So I actually had to, oh, just put the, Xterra into two-wheel drive and as you can see there our two uh, bolts that we couldn't access are now exposed so we'll go ahead and lock it back into four-wheel drive Alright, and just like that, the drive shaft is removed. Uh, now it's just propped up uh, on the transmission cross member, which I think should be okay, but if you want, uh, you can tie it up with some uh, wire or zip tie or something like that. So next we'll move on to the uh, 12 bolts holding the CV axles in place. 
All right, guys, so we'll take a 12 millimeter wrench and we'll spin these guys out. Now these bolts do have uh, from the factory a little bit of blue Loctite on them as well as a locking washer. So they might be tight. So you can, if they are really tight, uh, pre-loosen these with the uh, wheels on the ground so you can get a bit more leverage on here. Or uh, you can get in through here uh, with uh, a few different elbows and whatnot and get in here with an impact but it, the space is quite tight so I find doing it this way if you can uh, it's a bit more time consuming but I think this is the uh, best way to do it so you might not be able to see but there are two kind of back here where you can see my finger wiggling now these ones are a little bit tricky to get to but you can potentially reach them straight through here if you'd like or Just reach them from the front here. Okay, we've got uh, six bolts removed, so we can just pull that, pop it off. And uh, just got the axle sort of tied up out of the way super crudely with a coat hanger just on top of the shock nut here. Uh, that should be uh, good enough to keep it out of the way, so I'll jump over to the other side and remove that and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, so now that we've got the CD axle sorted and tied out of the way, we can move on to attempting to loosen these bolts on the back side of the cross member here. Uh, so this one here is a 17 millimeter nut and you will have to put a 17 millimeter wrench on the front side here. So I'm using my old uh, trusty sort of oversized ratchet here just to get a little bit of leverage. My big breaker bar is a bit too long, but we'll see if we can uh, get this guy to move. Oh. Sweet. I guess I got lucky on that one. All right, so at this point, we don't want to remove these completely, obviously. Uh, we'll just back them out so they're loose. And then uh, once we get the other side and the two front ones uh, loosened up, we can get our sort of... Uh, jacking device under here and slowly lift this uh, front diff and uh, cross member out in one shot and hopefully not drop it on the ground because you definitely don't want to damage this flange here so I'll jump over to the passenger side and see if we can get that one loose Awesome. This one didn't fight me at all either. Sweet. Okay. 
definitely pays to uh, soak these bolts uh, prior to uh, starting this. So we'll move on to the front of the diff and see if we can break those ones loose. Alright, so these again are 17s. So the tricky part here is that space is a bit of a premium in the front here so you won't be able to use uh, your super long wrenches here so hopefully we can get enough leverage on this with these uh, smaller ones oh perfect that broke free nice and easy so let's swap this over hopefully we get uh, lucky a fourth time here I think this side I might be able to get my longer ratchet in here, so give that a shot. This one seems pretty tight. an awful sound but I think it moved a little bit All right, well that one so far has been the toughest, toughest one. And uh, thankfully it didn't snap or anything like that, but it's good to know that we have the uh, four major mounting bolts loosened up. So uh, yeah, we can, uh, begin to position our jack and uh, support this whole thing up and then begin to uh, completely remove these bolts. All right, so we've got the two bolts on the front loose and just about ready to come out. And then we've got the two on the rear cross member loose and ready to come out. So I'm hoping this setup I'm hoping this setup will uh, let me lower this thing without uh, completely dropping it on the ground. So I've got a scissor jack that has a little hook there that's actually for my Volvo. Um, just in the rear of the cross member there and I'm hoping I can just sort of screw this out and uh, slowly lower it in tandem with uh, 
lowering the floor jack here, which is just uh, under the pumpkin. So hopefully that will let us drop this thing safely uh, without damaging anything. But yeah, these are all loose, ready to go. So ready to come out.
fuck. That was a marathon. Now the hard part is I have no idea how the fuck I'm going to get that thing back in. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, there's the front diff out. Not too bad to, uh, you know, remove all the bolts, but it's a bit tricky to uh, get this thing out. Essentially, this uh, flange here almost needs to be pointed straight at the ground. Enough so you can clear that weird hump in the pan uh, with the passenger side uh, housing here and then you just have to finagle it out <laughs> and not drop it down and you can kind of see how I managed to do this um, yeah it's this is gonna be a bitch to get back in and uh, the fun part is this isn't even what we're trying to fix so <laughs> Thank you, Nissan, for putting this in the way of the oil pan. But now that we've got this out of the way, we can see the pan here, which hopefully is the reason why I have an oil leak and it's not the rear main, but at the end of the day, uh, It'll be peace of mind that this is done and it probably and it won't leak. But holy shit, that is pretty intense to get that out. You know, I know it's not recommended to fucking pull this cross member out, but you honestly you'd 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 be easier just to take those bolts off and pull this thing straight down and then I don't know, retack this. But, uh, oh, that's the front diff out.